right, boys and girls, and welcome to another week of Sunday School. We're going to have a good time here and sing a song that I think each and every one of you is familiar with, and it is, I am in right, out right, up right, down right. So let's go ahead and sing together, and we'll have some fun throughout this song. So let's get started. I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, happy all the time. I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, happy all the time. Since Jesus Christ came in and cleansed my heart from sin. I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, happy all the time. All right. How many of you think that we can do it just a little bit faster? I think we can. So let's try to go a little faster and everyone get it, everyone stand up and get excited. So here we go. I'm in right, out, right, up, right, down, right, happy all the time. I'm in right, out, right, up, right, down, right, happy all the time. Since Jesus Christ came in and cleansed my heart from sin. I'm in right, out, right, up, right, down, right, happy all the time. Woo! All right, let's sing faster. All right, here we go. I'm in right, out, right, up, right, down, right, happy all the time. I'm in right, out, right, up, right, down, happy all the time. Since Jesus Christ came in and cleansed my heart from sin. I'm in right, out, right, up, right, down, right, happy all the time. That was really fast. Let's slow it down real quick and go super slow. All right, you ready? Here we go. I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, happy. All the time, I'm in right, out right, up right, down right, happy all the time, since Jesus Christ came in and cleansed my heart from sin. You ready? Sin. I'm in right, out, right, up, right, down, right, happy all the time. Whew. That was really slow. I don't think I want to go any slower, but... We have one more that we have to try, and it's super sonic speed. All right. So, you guys ready? We're going to go as fast as we can, and I want you guys to sing along with me, and I want you guys to try to beat me singing this one. So, here we go. I'm... Do you see it? I did it. I'm done. You guys, I, I was so fast. Okay, I, I fine. I'll slow it down. So you guys can see me do it, all right? I'll slow down just a little bit so you can see me do it. Here we go. I'm... I did it again. You missed it. All right, okay. All right, I'll slow it down even more so you can see it. All right, here we go. I'm in right, 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 right now, happy all the time. I'm in right, 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 happy all the time. Since she's coming in, comes from sin. I'm in right, 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 right now, happy That was fun. How many of you guys were faster than me? Ah, uh, okay, I don't, I doubt it, but all right, that's fine, that's fine. All right, boys and girls, welcome to another fun time with Jack and DJ. Woo! And we're going to be having, uh, oh, I don't think we're doing a game today. We're, what, are we, what are we specifically doing? We are doing Mad Libs. Ooh, Mad Libs. Mad Libs. Now, am I going to get mad? I hope not. No? Okay. That, would, that wouldn't be a good look. That would not be good. <laughs> no, no. So. All right, Jack, so why don't you describe to our young, fun listeners what Mad Libs are? So, Wikipedia describes Mad Libs as a phrasal template word game where one player prompts others for a list of words to substitute for blanks in a story before reading aloud. So, in other words, Jack is going to ask me for certain things like nouns, verbs, adjectives, gerunds, infinitives, etc. etc. And I'm going to do my best to give him those things. And then 
those words are put into a story. And the story could be something like Jack and Jill ran down a hill. Mm -hmm. and, but with the words that we put in, it can make the story really funny. It's not really a game today, we're just kind of a fun time where we can have some laughs with each other. Okay, so I'm ready. Who's calling me? Anywho, um, let's get started. Okay, so this one is called A Letter from Camp. Oh, I never got letters. Thank you. Neither did I. That's very sad. Yeah, okay. My, okay. my mom didn't miss me that much. Ooh. So yeah, so A Letter from Camp, but I think this is actually like someone sending a letter to someone. Oh, okay. So yeah. So the first thing I need is a relative, like a relative. relative. Or doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Uh, Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob. It's always okay. Very generic, relative. An adjective. An adjective. Um, an adjective. Oh, boy. Something that describes a noun. Describes a noun. Okay. Uh, like fluffy. Fluffy. Nice. Okay. Another adjective. Oh, another one. Um. Big. Big. Nice. Another one? Another adjective? Yes. Oh my. Uh, uh, quick. Quick. Okay. Quick. Yeah. Name of a person in the room. Jack. Yeah. So that's all you got. Another adjective. Oh my goodness. Uh, hard. Hard. Yeah. Okay. Another one. Another adjective. Uh, this is a lot of adjectives. A lot of adjectives. I'm going to have to start looking up like lots of adjectives. I think this might be the last one. Why don't you give an adjective? An adjective? Yeah, I've done all the adjectives. Uh, uh, succulent. Succulent. Yeah. I think I spelled that right. All right. A verb ending in ed. Oh, kicked. 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 All right. A body part. A body part. Mm -hmm. uh, face. Wait, that's, face. that's not a body part, is it? Yeah, it is. No, that's not a... I mean, it's a part of your body. Nose. Nose? Okay. Yeah. Uh, a verb ending in ing. Oh, boy. Um, verb running. Running. All right, a noun, a plural noun. Um, which means hymn books. Hymn him books. books. That's appropriate. Yeah. All right, a noun. Another, okay. Yes. Uh, a snake. A snake. Yeah. Okay. Snakes are good at camp. You have to have snakes at camp. True. Okay. Adverb. An adverb? Okay, an adverb, those are supposed to be like describing. Oh, a sure. Verb. Yeah. Like he quickly ran, quickly ran, or like, yeah. Why don't you just do quickly? Okay, fine. Quickly. We already did quick. Wait, was that adjective up there? Quick is not adjective. It wouldn't be. No, it is. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah, okay. Quick, quick man. man. Okay, yeah. yeah, quick. yeah. All right. Verb. Um, another verb. Uh, to uh, sleep. 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 All right. Uh, another verb. Fell. Fell. Yeah. A relative. So we did on the bottom. But uh, Aunt Susie. Aunt Susie. Sorry, and if you have an Aunt Susie or Uncle Bob, I'm very sorry. And another person in, in the room. DJ. DJ. Okay. Now, we can say Jesus. Now, <laughs> we're going to read the story to you. He is here. That is true. Here's a letter from Cam. Okay. Dear Uncle Bob. I am having a fluffy time at camp. The counselor, the counselor is big and the food is quick. I met Jack and we became hard friends. Hard friends, hard hard friends. friends. fast friends, it's hard. True. Unfortunately, Jack is succulent <laughs> and I kicked my nose so we couldn't go running like everybody else. Don't do that. Yeah. I need more hymn books and a snake sharpener. <laughs> so please, okay. quickly sleep more when you fell back. Doesn't make any sense, <laughs> but that's fine. Your Aunt Susie, DJ. What? <laughs> I mean, Aunt Susie. I'm Aunt Susie. Your oh, Aunt Susie, DJ. All right. Okay, okay. Well, it's my turn. Oh, right. Personal ad. Oh, there's a lot here. Okay. Oh yeah. An adjective. Adjective. Stinky. 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 Thank you. Okay, there you go. Thank you. Verb ending in ed. Uh, verb ending in ed. 
baked. Baked. Okay. Noun, that's plural. Noun, that is plural. Uh, pianos. Pianos. Okay, I can't spell it, that's okay. Liquid. Coca-Cola. 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 Okay, yeah. Yes. Uh, noun, that's plural. Cats. Cats. Okay. Famous person. Uh, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. You have to have Tom Cruise. Place. Church. Church. Tom Cruise loves church. Occupation. Occupation. Um. Garbage man. Garbage. Garbage man. Noun. Noun. Mm -hmm. Pulpit. Pulpit. A nationality. Asian. Asian. Mm -hmm. Female celebrity. Female celebrity. Mm -hmm. Don't embarrass yourself. I literally can't think of it. Okay. A noun. A noun. Mm -hmm. Chair. A chair. Okay. F a female friend. Davina. Davina. My best friend. Ben. Oh. <laughs> uh, pl noun that's plural. Parking lots. Uh, a number. 17. 17. An adjective, the last one. An adjective. Uh, I already said stinky. That's my favorite. Yeah, stinky. Yeah, we read it one. Uh, round. Round. Okay, that was the last one. Okay, so the personal ad. Okay, so if you're like putting an ad out there That's and so people to get a job. Okay, or here we go. Uh, I enjoy long, stinky walks on the beach, getting baked in the rain and s syrup and serendipitous. serendipitous encounters with pianos. I really like pina coladas mixed with Coca-Cola and, rom <laughs> <This one's laughs> inappropriate. and romantic candlelit cats. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't let light your cat on fire. I am well read from Dr. Seuss to Tom Cruise. I travel frequently, especially to church. Amen. That's, that's actually a very true statement. That's true. When I'm not too. busy with work, I am a garbage man. That was that was kind of like anticlimactic. Yeah. <laughs> I am looking for pulpits and beauty in the form of an Asian goddess. Whoa. She would have the physique of Nicole Kidman and and the and chair, the chair of the Davina. <laughs> okay, I don't get that. I would prefer if she knew how to cook, clean, and wash my parking lot. Lots, lots. I know I'm not very attractive in my picture, but it was taken 17 years ago, and I have since become more brown. more brown. <laughs> <laughs> I have since become more round. <laughs> That's funny. That's very true. It's true, yeah. <laughs> 17 years ago, true. I mean, I was a... Uh, uh, you know, everyone gets a little more round six. after 17 years. Oh, that's actually not bad. That was actually pretty funny. Okay, your turn. Okay. Okay. My turn. All right. Uh, let's do uh, the Walmart difference. The Walmart. Okay, the Walmart difference. I need a verb. A verb. Ran. Ran. An adjective. An adjective. Yes. Uh, I feel like I'm in the room sometimes. I, I literally can't think of an adjective right now. Uh, stinky. Stinky. Noun that's plural. Cars. Cars. Another adjective. Oh man, another one. Brown. Brown. Verb ending in ing. Uh, uh, eating. Eating. Another verb. Smell. Smell. A number. 17. 17. Love 17. Adjective. Adjective. Uh, dark. Dark. Another noun that's a plural. Cats. Cats. Did I say cats? I said cars. No. I said another. Now I need another one. It's plural. Another one. Another noun that's plural. Microphones. Microphones. Another noun that's plural. Doorknobs. Doorknobs. I need a relative. It's plural. Uh, a relative? 
cousins or plural? A rel third cousins. Third cousins? Mm -hmm. Okay. Third cousins. I need an adjective. That's right. Beautiful. Be you. Oh, that's a good one. Be beautiful. Another adjective. Oh, ugly. <laughs> Enormous. Enormous. A noun that's plural. Is a noun that is plural. Uh, mountains. Okay. Here we go. Let's see what it says. All right. The Walmart difference. Come. Run at Walmart, like a five where you'll something. receive stinky discounts on all of your favorite brand name cars. <laughs> wow, I'm selling cars now? <laughs> Our Brown and Eating Associates are there, oh my. <laughs> are, there <to> s <laughs> are there to smell you 17 hours a day. That's a little bit weird. <laughs> Here you will find dark prices on the cats you need. Microphones for your moms, doorknobs for the kids, and all the latest electronics for the third cousins. <laughs> this is good. So come on down to your beautiful, enormous Walmart where the mountains come first. Amen. Hey. That was good. That was actually not bad. That was that good. That was not bad. Okay, let's do another one. All right, I guess one more turn, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah one more. Oh, no. oh, do we sick note? Sick note. Sick note. Sick note. Sick note. What, what page is that on? Oh yeah, there's a bunch of these. I need a silly word. Um, snuffleupolis. Snuffleupolis. Try to say that five times. Snuffleupolis. Snuffleupolis. I can't. No. Snuffleupolis. Yeah, I. Oh, I, I, yeah, that, that's Last good. Name. Good. Yeah. Last name, yeah. Castillo. Castillo. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Uh, illness. Uh, chicken pox. Okay. Why should it COVID-19? Yeah, nah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> noun, plural. No. Uh, and noun, plural. Um, toilet papers. Toilet? No, no, not toilet papers. No. Is, a, is a plural? Toilet or? paper. Is yeah. plural. <laughs> like okay. Moose. Yeah. Mooses. Moose. Moose. Okay. Uh, an adjective. An adjective. Um, fat. Another adjective. Um, ugly. Silly word. Um, Pikachu. Peek, uh. <laughs> Peek, what is Pikachu? Pikachu. What is um, Pikachu? Is that, is that like a that little rat or something? It's a rat? Yeah. Alright, uh, place. Uh, place. Um, place. Uh, gas station. Gas station. Not safe. Gas station. Uh, yeah. Number, sorry. <laughs> right, <something else. laughs> do, do, do. Uh, one thousand. One thousand. Okay. Adjective. Adjective. Um, um, boy, I'm having brain problems. Adjective. Adjective. Dead. Wait, is dead? Is that an adjective? Like dead man? Dead man? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Dear school nurse, mm. Snuffleopolis Castillo will not be attending school today. You know, that's a good that's a good name for our child. I think you should name your first child Snuff if it's a girl, Snuffleopola. Yeah, and then it's Snuffy for short. Snuffy. Snuffy Castillo mm -hmm. will be will not be attending school today. Okay. Uh, he or she has come down with a case of chicken pox and has horrible toilet paper and a fat fever. <laughs> we have made an appointment with the ugly Dr. Pikachu who studied for many years in gas station and has 1,000 degrees in pediatrics. Oh, man. He will send you all the information you need. Thank you. Sincerely, Mrs. Dead. Mrs. Dead. 
1,000 degrees. He what? probably, he probably. Man, how long do you have to go to school to get a thousand degrees? He probably has an enormous amount of school debt. Well, there we go. I think that's all we can do for today. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining us with Fun Time Mad Libs. We'll see you next week uh, for more stuff we'll do. We'll figure out what we're doing this week, okay? All right. Take care. All right. We're going to sing another song here. It's a hymn that we've all heard in church before. And uh, Miss Gail wanted to sing a couple songs here for your lesson. If you remember what we've been talking about, we've been talking about Jesus, right? And last week we talked about how he was going to the, how he was on his way to the cross. And this week, Miss Gail is going to continue the lesson. But we're going to sing a song here called At Calvary. At Calvary. All right. So let's go ahead and sing together. We're going to sing the first and the last verse of At Calvary. The first verse, years are spent in vanity and pride. In vanity and pride. Let's sing together. Here we go. Years I spend in vanity and pride, carry not my Lord as crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me, there my burning soul found liberty at Calvary. On the last verse, oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to men. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There, my burden is all found liberty at Calvary. Good job. Good morning. It's good to see everybody today. Uh, Easter Sunday, and this is the most celebrated uh, Christian holiday um, throughout the year because on this day, we remember when Jesus rose from the dead uh, so that we could have everlasting life with God in heaven. And it's traditional in a lot of Christian, uh, for a lot of Christians to give the Paschal greeting on uh, Easter morning, or one will say, Christ is risen, and the other will say, He is risen indeed. So I'm going to say, Christ is risen, and I want you to say, He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. All right, good job. Now this time, you say, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. All right, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. And we are going to pray and get right into it because we got a lot of territory to cover. So let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you <clears throat> abundantly that Christ is risen. Uh, because, because he lives, we can live with you in heaven. Also, we have him and the Holy Spirit with us every moment of the day. So, Lord, we thank you that Jesus was willing to come to earth and he lived a perfectly sinless life and he died a horrible death on the cross because he wanted to save us. And we thank you for that. And we thank you for the meaning of Easter, that he rose again and he defeated death. So I pray that our lesson today would mean <clears throat> something very special to each one and that you would uh, get across the message that you would have uh, to be taught today. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, uh, last week we talked about Holy Week and we introduced seven different uh, major events that happened during that week. And we're just going to quickly review. Uh, the first one we talked about was the triumphal entry where Jesus came into Jerusalem on a donkey and uh, everybody was all excited and waving palm leaves and saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Um, and <clears throat> they were expecting a mighty warrior king. But as we know, Jesus came the first time as a servant king. So he's very popular this day. Then uh, the more popular he became, the less satisfied and pleased the Pharisees and the scribes became 
because he was taking influence and importance from them. So they had been after him since the very beginning, but they made a plot to take his life this week. And Judas came to them and volunteered to help them out. And so that they were very glad to hear that. And he accepted 30 pieces of silver for betraying Jesus. Then we talked about the Last Supper, where Jesus and his disciples met together in an upper room and uh, he washed their feet and they t broke bread and drank wine together and he said this is the new covenant uh, in my blood and when we take communion now we remember what Jesus did for us. And then the arrest where Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane and he prayed, uh, if it's possible, Father, take this cup from me but not my will but thine be done. And so at the, uh, he prayed that three different times, but when it was time to go, uh, he knew that what the Father's will was, and he willingly uh, submitted to that. And as he was leaving the garden, Judas came with the soldiers, and he betrayed Jesus with a kiss. And so uh, the last thing we talked about as far as those events go was the fact that Jesus has now been arrested. Oh, and before I go any further, there are some uh, printouts that you can print <laughs> if, uh, if you have a printer at home and you want to. My, two of them are coloring pages. One of, them, one of them says, he is risen, and the other one says, he is risen. And one of them has the tomb, and one of them has the crosses in the tomb. So that's something that you can do uh, later if you want to. And then this is just a little worksheet that we're going to do at the end if we have time. So I um, wanted to show those before I forgot about them. So anyway, Jesus has been arrested, and so now we're going to talk about the trial. Of course, they're going to do this at night uh, while nobody is around that is in favor of Jesus. And the first place they took him was to Caiaphas, who was the high priest at that time. And uh, the Bible says that they kept trying to find false witnesses. Well, they had a bunch of false witnesses, but no two of them could agree. And they did have a law that you had to have at least two witnesses agreeing on uh, what they said. So finally they got one who said, I heard him say that he could destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. And uh, <clears throat> Jesus didn't say anything. And finally Caiaphas says, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ the Son of God. And then Jesus said, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. And that was enough for the high priest. He said, Blasphemy! And uh, the Bible says he rent his clothes. That was something uh, <clears throat> people did back then when something terrible happened. So this is one picture, and then this is just another picture. Uh, these are all, of course, what people think they might have looked like. But here you can see the high priest ripping his clothes, and after that uh, it says that the soldiers and the other people there uh, spat upon Jesus and made fun of him and slapped him in the face and said, prophesy, tell us who just hit you. So that was a very... <clears throat> humbling or humiliating experience for Jesus, but he did not strike back. He did not say anything uh, wrong. As a matter of fact, he didn't say anything at all after that. But they had a law. They didn't have the uh, authority to put someone to death. So they had to send him to Pilate, who was the Roman governor that, at that time. And <clears throat> Pilate questioned him, and he didn't say anything back to Pilate either. Um, but he could tell that he had done no wrong. And he knew that the Jewish leaders were just jealous of Jesus. And so he said, you know, I don't find any wrong in this man. I'm just going to let him go. And they said, no, no, you can't do it. He has said that he is the king and we have no king but Caesar. Uh, you, if you let this guy run around saying that he's the king, you're going to get in trouble because Caesar is not going to like that. So Pilate <clears throat> thought again about it and so he finally, he said, well, you know what? Usually during the feast time, we let one prisoner go. So I'm going to let Jesus go. And um, I'll, I'll have him scourged. And so he'll be punished, but I'm going to let him go. But the chief priests and the scribes, you know, sort of gone among the crowd. And they got them to say, no, no, we want Barabbas, 
Now, Barabbas was a convicted killer, and he was also an insurrectionist. So he, um, <clears throat> so Pilate said, well, if you want Barabbas, what do you want me to do with your king? And they said, he's not our king. And they yelled, crucify him, crucify him. So we see here a picture of Pilate, and he's washing his hands. He says, I'm going to wash my hands of this innocent man's blood. And the people yelled, his blood be on us and on our children. So Pilate uh, had Jesus scourged, and scourging was a horrible um, punishment, I guess you could say, or a horrible action. Um, and a lot of people did not survive the scourging, but it was done with uh, a whip, and they called it the cat of nine tails because it had nine tails, I guess, and they had little hooks on them. And every time you hit the person, those little hooks would dig in to uh, his body, and <clears throat> they did 39, 39 lashes. So by the time the scourging was over, Jesus was already very weak and in very much pain and um, also <clears throat> humiliated at the way he was treated. Then it says that the Roman soldiers uh, <clears throat> were playing, and they decided to make him a crown of thorns since he was the king. And so these are some good-sized thorns. They're not just little bitty things. And they made a crown for him, and the, they put it on his head, and it said they took a reed. And I was reading up on that, what that reed was. It was more like a, a hefty stick, and they hit the crown to knock it down. And so you know that his uh, face was bleeding and uh, he was being laughed at. And you know what? Nobody likes to be laughed at. I mean, even here in Sunday school, sometimes somebody will say, well, he called me a name. And you're mad at that. Uh, and Jesus was taking this horrible punishment. Uh, and yet the Bible says that he did not sin. And he, he uh, will find out in just a minute what he did say. So after he uh, was scourged and um, he was supposed to carry his own cross to uh, Golgotha, to Calvary, but he was so weak that the Bible says they found uh, a certain Simon of Cyrene and got him to carry the cross. And so then he was nailed on the cross and he was, let's see if I can get that to stick. Okay, he was nailed on the cross, and of course, again, uh, these are all pictures of what people thought it might have looked like, but we do know he would have been bloody. He would have had the crown of thorns on, and then here's another picture of uh, the three crosses, because we do know that he was uh, crucified between two criminals, and um, the first thing he said when he was on the cross was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, and uh, <clears throat> that takes unbelievable love, unbelievable discipline and self-control and compassion. Here he is suffering excruciatingly. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, come down from heaven uh, where everybody worships him. And he's hanging on a cross and he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Uh, and, <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, I keep looking over there. Here's my two bad guys. All right, one of them starts making fun of Jesus, and the other one says, you know, we deserve this, but this man has done nothing wrong. And he looks at Jesus and said, remember me uh, when you <clears throat> come into your kingdom. And Jesus looks at him and says, verily, I say unto you, this day you shall be with me in paradise. And so he's looking out for the thief. And then another thing that he says, he's, his mother and uh, some other women and John, as far as we know, was the only disciple at the cross. And he knows that his mother is uh, going to need somebody to take care of her. So he looks at her and says, woman, behold thy son. And he looks at John and said, behold thy mother. And then later on, uh, he cries out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And that's kind of a hard thing for us to really understand. But God is so holy that he cannot tolerate the presence of sin. And at this point in time, Jesus had all the sins of the whole world from beginning to end uh, on his shoulders. And so the father uh, loved the son, but he had to turn his back, so to speak, for a brief while. And um, <clears throat> Jesus 
felt abandoned. And um, if you've ever felt abandoned, maybe one of your friends did something wrong or somebody didn't show up for something, that's not a good feeling. But he felt abandoned by his father, and they had had such a close relationship uh, before that. And um, at the very end, he said, it is finished. And that was a saying of triumph. He had come to earth for a specific purpose, and by dying on the cross, he had completed that purpose. And when we talk about being saved, the only thing we have to do is accept his finished work. There's nothing else for us to do because he finished it. And then he said, Father, into, my, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And then the Bible says that he breathed his last. And so Jesus did all of that for us. Now, while Jesus was on the cross, we, we find out that it, the darkness overcame the earth, there were earthquakes, and that the veil of the temple was torn <clears throat> from top to bottom. And this represented, the, the veil was the uh, cur curtain that divided the temple from the Holy of Holies. And the only person that was allowed to go into the Holy of Holies was the high priest, and that was only at a certain time. But now Jesus has given us a new covenant, and Paul tells us in Ephesians that we have boldness with access by the faith of Christ. And this was not a small curtain. This was around 45 to 60 feet high and 4 inches wide, uh, and it was rent from top to bottom, which proves that nobody could have done it because they wouldn't have been able to start. So that was uh, a significant event. Also, when all this happened... We have the one of the centurions who was at uh, the foot of the cross. And when he saw all these things happening and the way Jesus reacted, he said, truly, this man was the Son of God. And so here we have a conversion, if you will. Um, <clears throat> somebody who probably just before that had been uh, casting lots for Jesus' clothes and had perhaps been making fun of him hitting him, uh, but he saw all of this and he said, truly, this man was the Son of God. And so that pretty much um, takes care of the trial and the crucifixion. I forgot to make that transition, but uh, that was the trial and the crucifixion. Now, <clears throat> the Bible says that, that um, the Roman soldiers would often break the legs of the people on the cross because um, one way they, they couldn't breathe and to keep themselves breathing and alive, they could push up with their feet. Uh, so since it was almost the Sabbath, they were going around and breaking the legs. When they got to Jesus, they found that he was already dead um, and they couldn't believe it. But that actually fulfilled a prophecy that not one of his bones would be broken. They did stick a spear in his side to make sure he was dead. And the Bible says that blood and water came out. So Joseph of Arimathea, who was on the Sanhedrin, and he had secretly believed in Jesus, but now uh, he's courageous and comes forward and asks Pilate for his body. And the Bible says that Joseph um, <coughs> took his body and uh, wrapped it in linen cloth. That was how they did it those days. And uh, they carried him to a tomb, which never a man had been laid in. And so they put Jesus in that tomb, and they often had big stones uh, to roll in front of the tombs to prevent uh, people, you know, grave robbers and things like that. And um, so after they put Jesus in the tomb, they rolled the stone in front. And then the scribes and Pharisees went to Pilate and they said, you know, this guy said that he was going to rise from the dead. So we need to put some soldiers uh, in front of the stone at the tomb so that his followers don't come and steal his body away and <clears throat> say that he has risen from the dead. So they put soldiers at the tomb um, to guard the tomb. And you can see the scribes and Pharisees here are looking pretty happy with themselves. Okay, I'm going to get a real quick drink here so I can finish strong. Okay, I'm going to take Jesus off the cross because he's not on the cross anymore. And I'm going to read part of this from the Bible. This is in Matthew chapter 28. 
and it says, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And so we're going to put, um, I believe there was another lady with them. But anyway, they're going toward the beginning of the day because they want to properly anoint Jesus' body because it all had happened very quickly when he was crucified. So they hadn't had the opportunity to give him the correct burial that he should have. <clears throat> and it says, And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. And the <clears throat> women had been worried, how are we going to get this stone moved? But the angel had already moved the stone when they got there. Let's see, where did I put my... Oh, here they are. Sorry. Okay, and it said, The angel of the Lord came down and rolled away the stone and sat on it. And it says, His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. So we see uh, that they're frightened to death. He's there. Everything is just his countenance. That just means the way he looks. And so we have the ladies. He says to the ladies, oh, first of all, it says, no, I already read that. Sorry. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. Come, see where the Lord lay. So they're looking in there, and they don't see Jesus. And uh, it's, it's too good to be true. You know, Jesus was dead, but now he's not dead. And they're kind of confused, too, because this had never happened before. Jesus had told them about it, but still, they didn't quite believe it, and they couldn't quite believe it. And so uh, the Bible says they ran back to tell the disciples, and everybody, uh, the disciples ran, and Jesus wasn't there, and nobody exactly knew what to think. Uh, the Bible does tell us that Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene, and um, she wanted to worship him, and he, you know, he said, you know, um, we'll wait until I come into, uh, till I return. And, but it does tell us in the Bible that Jesus appeared to the disciples in the upper room, that he appeared to Peter and James and John uh, on, the sea of, uh, on the coast of the Sea of Galilee, and that he appeared to two disciples walking to Emmaus. And he made many appearances to the disciples. He stayed on earth for 40 days, uh, after he arose from the dead, and he made many appearances. And then, when it was time for him to go back to heaven, uh, the Bible says that there were over 500 people um, watching. And he gave his final instructions. And then the Bible just says that he went up in the clouds. And everybody was just looking there, looking up into the clouds. And uh, it says that... Uh, angel came and said, Why, men of Galilee, are you looking up into the clouds? This same Jesus who came this time is going to come back. And he's going to come just the same way as you see him going up. And before Jesus had left, he had told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit came. Uh, and then to go into all the world. So... <clears throat> This, this is the resurrected Jesus, and this is the glorified Jesus. And the Bible tells us many times that Jesus is going to come back for his children. Uh, in John 14, he says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. So um, we just had revival. If you have been uh, watching the revival, you know that Mr. Summerdorf kept saying, the newspapers don't write anything about it, but the biggest news of all is that the king is coming. And so uh, the Bible tells us that there's not one single promise that God ever made that he didn't keep. So we know when Jesus says that he's coming back, he is coming back. And um, what you need to know is what to do about that. 
And I know that many of you are already Christians. You've already trusted Jesus as your Savior. And maybe all of you that are watching have. But if you haven't, uh, in order for Jesus to come back for you, you need to trust him as your Savior. Um, next week, we're going to talk a little bit more about why Jesus had to die for us and go over in detail uh, the steps to becoming a Christian. But this is just a little, and I know you can't see it very well from home, but it's a little tract, and it mentions the ABCs of being saved. And everybody, um, when you start to learn to read, you learn, your, you learn your ABCs first. But the A says to admit, which means to confess to God that you know that you're a sinner. Uh, nobody can really be sorry for their sins unless they realize they're a sinner. So that's the first step to realize that you're a sinner and to confess to God and to agree with him that you are a sinner. Uh, Mr. Samador called us dirty, rotten sinners uh, and maybe a couple of other words, but um, you know, most of us don't like to be call, thought of as being dirty and rotten, but uh, the Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags compared to God. So we are sinners, we must realize that. And then the B stands for believe. Uh, and that means we must believe that Jesus is our Savior and that he is the only way to heaven. We must trust in him alone. And um, then we must commit. The C, we must commit to his leadership, his lordship, commit um, to being his servant and he being our master. And then um, we live for him the rest of our lives. And it's not easy. Uh, but it's worth it. And he, sent, he gives us the Holy Spirit to dwell inside of us to help us uh, keep his commandments. So if you have never <coughs> received Jesus as your Savior or trusted him, uh, you may know some adults uh, that you can talk to, your parents, your Sunday school teacher, um, and they will help you with this because everybody will rejoice uh, the Bible says that there is rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who comes to repentance. And um, I think that's it for today. Uh, in just a minute, we are going to sing a little chorus. And it is, all it says is, alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive. And uh, it says that a couple of times. And it says this a couple of times. And um, we have sung it before, so those of you that have been here, it's just a, a rejoicing song, rejoicing for the fact that Jesus came to earth. He left heaven. He <clears throat> lived a perfect, sinless life. He is the Lamb of God uh, who sacrificed himself for the <clears throat> sheep in the world, and that includes me, and that includes you. So uh, we're going to pray a um, prayer and then in just a few seconds, we're going to sing Alive, Alive, and that will be our closing. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, this is such a wonderful story. Uh, it is <clears throat> hard for us to really uh, believe it, even though we do believe it. It's, it's just so hard to understand why Jesus would do this for us. Um, so we thank you. And I think of the song that says... Uh, Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan, and oh, the grace that brought it down to man. And so we thank you for that love and grace, and pray that we would uh, live a life that pleases you. And um, one day we will see you in person, see Jesus in person. We thank you for that. Amen. Let's sing this song, Alive, Alive, Alive Forevermore. My Jesus is alive forevermore. All right, let's sing together. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive. Sing alleluia, sing alleluia. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Sing alleluia, sing alleluia. My Jesus is alive. All right, let's sing it one more time. 
Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive. Sing alleluia, sing alleluia. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Sing alleluia, sing alleluia. My Jesus is alive. Good job. Thank you for joining our Sunday School class today. We hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next week for another fun time of Children's Sunday School. Happy Easter, everyone.